Today on Rambling About Cars, we're trucking in the USA. You may have heard there's a new lightning in town. We're not talking about that just yet, though, because you've probably heard and heard and heard and heard about it. So we're going to talk about the cool street trucks that led to the lightning and coexisted with the lightning for a while. And yes, the new lightning is electric. Is it a bad thing? I don't think so. I think there's a lot of potential here. So electrical evangelists, it's podcast time. I'm Christopher Smith. Across the way is Chris Bruce. What's up, Bruce? It's been quite a week, man. Yeah, it has been quite a week. We got kind of a weird show for you tonight. Um, you'll understand why here in a little bit, but let's start talking about street trucks and performance trucks first. And, uh, you know, doing some research for this episode, the best that I can tell is that the Dodge Little Red Express was the very first kind of street performance truck out there. And, yeah. you know, even in the late 60s, you could get a big block in a Chevy pickup. Like, I'm not saying you couldn't get a <laughs> speedy pickup before that. But the Little Red Express was the first one yep. that legitimately, it, it was, the focus was on performance rather than capability. And you make a good point, Bruce. Um, I really hope we get some emails from people griping about us saying, well, I'd have. I had a I had a Chevy back in 1969 that had the, that had a 454 in it and, and it would wipe the street with any muscle car I came up against. Yeah, I mean when you go back to the original muscle car era, I mean there there were so many ways to option out trucks, sure. but none of them were really designed from the get go to be a street machine. And right, putting I the mean, big engine in was supposed yep. to give you more capability, whether it was towing or hauling or pulling or whatever it is you were doing. That was the reason that the bigger engine was there. It was right. not there for straight line performance. And right. like I said, can you think of anything earlier than the Little Red Express that kind of did that? I mean, I, I was looking as well. Um, like I said, I think some people might argue that you could get fast trucks with right. the right engine I, combination, I, but no, I mean, when you look at the, the, uh, what was it? 78 and 79, I think the little red express mm -hmm. that was designed from the get go to be first and foremost, a cool looking fun street truck. Um, I mean, we're looking at the picture now you want to catch us on YouTube to, to get all of these cool pictures because I mean, this is like a classic 70s shot too. I mean, that's, we, we got, we got the guy there with a the curly, uh, with the curly hair, with a girl in the Daisy Dukes. And you've got the little red express with the side pipes and the wood paneling on the sides and the back little step side mm -hmm. had the 15 inch wheels with the white letter tires. I mean, just a cool truck. And Bruce, you, you probably know the loophole that made this one of the fastest, if not the fastest accelerating U.S. production vehicles in 1978. It wasn't a car. It was this truck. Right. Because they could classify it as a truck at that point in time, they didn't need to put catalytic converters on it like you would have to uh, your standard muscle car. And they right. some clever person at uh, Dodge figured this out. So they put in their 360 V8, but it was essentially the police spec engine that they then upgraded even further with even more stuff. Um, I'm looking at a list here. Uh, super flow heads, the same camshaft as the police version, the double snorkel intake, heavy duty valve springs, cold air induction, dual exhaust that are coming up out of the top. So they basically, they did everything they could. Power is still by modern standards, not that it's, great. It's, it's, it's weak, but in 1978, it was 225 horsepower, right? And 200 and like 75 or 280 pound feet of torque, something like that. I lost my numbers. Which, man. which, I mean, it's it's a 5.9 liter engine for mm -hmm. people that don't speak cubic inch. This is a 5.9 liter engine, so I mean, it's it's fairly decent sized uh, displacement wise. Mm -hmm. But you're talking 1978. The Corvette with its 350, I think, was like what. A buck eighty, if that. That was a bad year for the Corvette. Yeah. Um, I, I mean the Trans Am with a six point six liter. Um, I think that was right around two hundred or maybe two hundred and ten horsepower. So, I mean, yeah, it was making good power for the time. And, and so to prove that, and to <laughs> kind of what made this car's legacy is that so in nineteen seventy seven, a uh, car and driver tested it, and they. They took, you can see here, they had a Corvette L82, Monza Spider, a Saab Turbo, a Firebird Trans Am, the Little Red Express, 
a T-Bird, a Mazda Cosmo. I would love to know how they got a hold of that. <laughs> a Porsche 924 and a Kelmark GT, which is essentially a VW kit car. Um, and the Little Bread Express was the fastest to 100 amongst all of those. The Little Bread Express beat the Corvette. It beat it beat Smokey the Bandit's Trans Am. Um, it beat the Thunderbird at the time. I mean, the, the, the Thunderbird. That's was not pretty, that the, the, the impressive Thunderbird, of a feat. But, <laughs> I mean, uh, the Thunderbird at that time a win probably is a had, win. I mean, that was, I think, probably the five liter in a car weighing 4,000 pounds. So, yeah. Uh, and that's another thing. Um, the Little Red Express, I want to say that weighed like 3,800 pounds. No, it's... I, I, my research or, or told something, me that something like that, which was like, I, I mean, man, that's like a, just a regular Mustang GT today. <laughs> Never mind something like a Hellcat Charger or a Challenger or or the GT five hundred, right? Right, right. So yeah, it, you know, they're a neat little truck. They only lasted two years. It was a seventy eight seventy nine thing. So you know, not around very long, but very low production too. I think. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm just going off the top of my head because I kind of love these trucks, um, like something like 2000 for 78. And then like, I think a little 3, bit 000, more, yeah. a little bit more for for uh, the next year. Um, but I think power was down a little bit the next year. And they were the, the styling was also updated for the next year. And for I'm my, at, for I'm my mind, the original breakdown, is the sorry. one I get. I'm looking at a price breakdown right now. So uh First year they were seven thousand four hundred twenty-one dollars out the door. Uh, your options were you could get um, air conditioning, heavy-duty front springs, um, and a choice between bench or bucket seats, and uh, those were your options. <laughs> Different times, man. Yeah, but you, but you know what? I, I mean, seven thousand. It's, it sounds ridiculously cheap now, but 7,000 and 78, I mean, 7,500, but yeah, I, I mean, I mean, that wasn't, I mean, that wasn't just throwaway money by any means. I mean, that was, that was still a pretty decent amount. I can't remember what the, uh, you know, what some of the exotics were that time. I mean, I think they were like, I think you pay like, like 20 or 30 grand or so for some of the Ferraris. So, um, you know, 7,000 for a little, really a little tiny truck with a tiny bed that uh, just looked good on the street. Yeah, it was it was an interesting truck for its time. So and, I just and really that that paved the way for everything that uh, that came afterwards, right? Yeah. Well, hold on one second. So I just pulled it up. I used the Bureau of Labor Statistics inflation calculator. So May of seventy eight, um, seventy five hundred dollars at that time is thirty one thousand dollars today. So wow. Th yeah, not too so shabby. So are you saying then that the Ram TRX should be about $30,000? Are, are you listening, Ram? <laughs> should it be? <laughs> yes. But is it? No, it's well, double the, that the, and plus The damage. Hellcat is $30,000. I mean, the engine. No, what's what's yeah. the uh, what's a hell crate? I, it's like 22 or 25 grand, something like that. I think it's closer to 30, but yeah. So, oh, man. Different times. Anyway, different times. Yeah, let's, let's move let's, forward. Let's move foot forward a little bit. What? um. So, I mean, if we're just going chronologically here, next would be the... so a, a weird one. So once again, we're going to be talking a Dodge, but a Carol Shelby helped assisted Dodge. Of Shelby. All things. So um, the Shelby De Dakota, I don't know why I said Daytona, Shelby Dakota, this came out in uh, 88. Here, let me double check my numbers here. Um 89 um mm -hmm. and yeah you know, you'll have a picture of it right here during during shelby's foray with chrysler yeah where you get your omni glhs's and the omni and and the daytona as you yeah. were about to say that's, i, I, yeah, I that's still lost that. over those shelby daytonas i don't care that they're front wheel drive they look amazing with that 2.2 -two turbo I, I would if i find a nice one i'm getting it and i know i say that about some car every week <laughs> <laughs> which is why, which is why I'm going to start my GoFundMe to uh, so all of you wonderful listeners can support the Christopher Smith archive. We should just start a garage. Patreon. Like people can give <laughs> us money to buy bad cars, buy bad cars, and then you can come over, you can visit, and you can drive them because they're bad oh, cars, yeah. and we don't care. 
That's right. We don't care. This is but a yeah. great idea. So we're looking at the Shelby Dakota. So, so the story cool with truck. these, yeah, the story with these, they originally came with a 3.9 liter V6 and like mm -hmm. the regular day Dakota. Um, Shelby threw that out. They put in a 5.2 liter V8 with throttle body injection. Again, we're talking late 80s, so power isn't quite the same as it is right. today. So that 5.2 liter V8 was making 175 horsepower. But, and that was and that was the, just the regular output for that engine. And what I want to stress, I mean, Shelby swapped in that engine, but it was a little disappointing that they didn't do anything else to it. That was just the regular. That was the regular Dodge, uh, three eighteen V eight at the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it was still something. There, uh, the, well, but the point that's worth making though is there there was no other truck like this on the market that you mm -hmm. could just buy. Of course, you could buy a truck and add all sorts of stuff to it, but if you wanted a pre made truck. It was this or nothing at the time. And at that time for the Dakota, that was the only way to get the V8. Dodge mm -hmm. offered it later on in the later generations as an option. But if you wanted the, the V8 in the midsize Dakota in the late 80s, the Shelby was the only way to get it. Now, here's a trivia question that I'll ask you, Bruce. Okay. Um, and we'll also put it out to all of the rambling about cars listeners out there. How many times does the word Shelby appear in some form on the Shelby Dakota. Well, it's I'll be honest. I, I don't know that. I don't I'm know the answer the seats because it's nearly <laughs> infinite because it's time after time after time on the seat. It's, it's like Shelby, 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 Shelby. I mean, just, even if you look at, so it's, it's, on, the, it's on, the, on the door panels, it's, it's on, on the door, door panels as well. Like yep, it, it's on the seats. It's on, it's the, on the floor mats. Like the floor mats. There is it is no mistaking this as anything but a Shelby. It is everywhere. I never sat down to count how many instances of the word Shelby there are, but I think this is probably the record right here. The Shelby Dakota. Yeah, there, there is no mistake and, in this for anything. And I mean, it was it was a sign of the times. I yeah. mean, the the eighties were you're still trying to get performance back in vehicles, and and appearance was still the thing, and. I mean, Shelby is, I mean, is just revered nowadays, but going here through the, through the eighties, I mean, Shelby didn't have the same, the same kind of following that it has now. Right. That, that really changed when Shelby got reaffiliated with Ford. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, at the time, I mean, hey, the Shelby was kind of trying to reestablish their name, if you will. So yeah, all over the Dakota, but still it's, it's a cool truck. And if you keep an eye out, these pop up from time to time and they generally don't go for very much money, even in good shape. If they're hard to find in good shape. I got to yeah. tell you. So well, real quick here. So this is, we didn't, unfortunately we didn't cover this in 2018, but in 2018, apparently Shelby also made a prototype of a Ram Shelby. Um, we'll see really? it right here. Yeah. Like you're um, surprising and, me here now. I don't, I haven't seen this one. Yeah. This was a prototype. Um, never got, you know, made it into series production or anything, but it did exist. Uh, it's got a 360 cubic inch V8 um, with all sorts of work done to it. So it made 300 horse. This is in 1983. Um, so, yeah, that's 300 horse in 1983. That could have been a decent little truck. Like I said, never happened. That would have been a screamer. That, But it doesn't really look like a street truck, though. It, I mean, the, the I guess it could be. I mean, it has it has an aggressive tread on the tire. I just um, I, I saw it and thought it was interesting, and while I was looking at Shelby stuff, so you know, no, what could have been? Yeah, you're getting me. I've that's the first time I've seen that, and uh, you are you are the boss because I I thought that okay, I've got a pretty good idea of of street trucks, and yeah, you just you just put me to shame there. Nice find. Yeah. What other what other weird finds are out there? Email us at podcast at motor one.com. I'll throw on that shout out right now. Tell us what we're missing, but let's move on. I think next is going to be the folks from Chevrolet. Am, am I thinking, am I thinking correct on that? Yeah, it, it gets kind of complicated in terms of timing here, but yeah, we can go ahead, go ahead and do Chevrolet next. And so that's going to be your C series, a C 1500 Silverado, as we know it today. The uh, 454 SS. Yes. Um, which these things were, I I have a vague memory of these. This is just a so bit before yeah. my time of kind of cool cars, but I do have vague memories of these being a pretty cool. I mean, thing. they were, they were really selling the image just, I mean, black truck. 
I mean, this is at a point where you still had a lot of chrome on stuff. Yeah, and there's so, not I mean, a bit there, of chrome. There, on there's this. not the, the only thing chrome on this is the wheels, right? Mm -hmm. Um, the grill is blacked out. Of course, it had the 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 red trim for the Chevy badge, the 454 SS. I mean, it was a direct callback to to the the infamous uh, 70 Chevelle SS 454. I know that's a car, but that's considered but by many to be to be like the the baddest, the the most ultimate muscle car of the original muscle car era. So this was really kind of a callback to that. It had the 454 cubic inch V8. It only made 230 horsepower, <laughs> but 385 yeah. pound feet of torque, and you could only get them with an automatic. So yeah, well, they were. I mean, with that much torque in just a single cab short bag truck, I I mean, I like driving a manual, and I wouldn't want a manual on that. Mm -hmm. uh, has has it was all of these things did was just just atomized rubber. That's all they did. I mean, they were. I think they did zero to sixty in about uh, like seven and a half seconds if you could get it to hook up, mm -hmm. which generally you couldn't. Um, I mean, it's it, it's a muscle truck. It's right. it's a straight up muscle truck. Um, and I mean, this is at the time we're starting to get some power back, but I mean, the image of these trucks just sold. And people kind of glossed over 230 horsepower. Although, again, 1990, um, right? The Chevrolet, so, the Chevrolet Corvette, I think, was 250 horsepower somewhere around there. Oh, I see. I thought you were going to talk about the next year from GM. That something that came out. I thought we were oh, going to yeah, transition well, to that. Oh well, well, we'll transition to that in a moment. I think everybody knows what we're going to transition to there. But I mean, let's let's take a moment and just appreciate. It was a simple truck. Um, I can't recall if there were any substantial suspension modifications. Um, from what I was seeing, there were different anti-roll bars. So I think so, they stiffened that up. So, but. so just, just beefed up the anti-roll bars. But I mean, otherwise, it's just the black truck, the lightest. Big you engine. Two-wheel drive. These weren't four-wheel drive. These were, these were two-wheel drive. And yeah, you just go out and you roast tires. And I'll, I'll drink to that. They, they love to roast tires. So I'm looking at it now. So they got a heavy duty radiator. Um, they got separate coolers for the engine and transmission fluid, Bilstein shocks, heavy, uh, qu sorry, okay, quick Bilstein ratio shocks. steering and the thicker anti-roll bars. So, so, so I mean, I mean a little bit, I yeah. mean a little bit to, to help it deal with that power. Yeah. Um, and I mean, no. yeah, very cool truck. Very cool truck. Um, next year though. Yeah. And now here, this is when comes, things get really cool. Something from GMC. Now these didn't smoke the tires because they were driving all four. Well, I guess you could smoke. Them. I've seen people smoke the tires in these. If, if you just I've crank the wheels, honest. mash the gas and just, uh, and just sit in one spot doing the ultimate, uh, all wheel drive donut. Of course, we're talking about the GMC cyclone. Come on. How can we talk about street trucks and not talk about the GMC cyclone? They came out in 1991 and had the 4.3 liter, uh, turbocharged V six, 280 horsepower, and, you know, Bruce, it's funny that um, you referenced the car and driver um, showdown with the Little Red Express back in the 70s, because car and driver, if I remember correctly, also had a showdown with the Ferrari 348 and the GMC Cyclone. And it was a rather it was a rather famous article, I recall, um, because the Cyclone beat the Ferrari. It's like here is Chevrolet's or GMC, if you will. Um, here is essentially their small economy minded kind of base model pickup truck. And it's beating a Ferrari in the quarter mile. It beat it just barely. If I recall after the quarter mile, the, the 348 pulled away, but when you have 280 horsepower in a relatively light package, all wheel drive, it had the four speed automatic transmission. They were quick. And because of that, they are still legendary to this day. Yeah, they're deceptively quick too is kind of the thing that that yes. it doesn't by modern standards it doesn't look like a performance vehicle you know yeah at the time with the lack of chrome and whatnot it looked a little sportier but by modern standards it just looks like a small truck mm -hmm. and it, it, well and and at, keep in mind at the time there was also the GMC Sonoma which was an appearance package for the for the S15 um and it was similar looking to the Cyclone. I, if I remember correctly, it had a very similar front fascia. 
Um, and it, it had a lot of monochrome treatments on it. So, I mean, the, the Cyclone was sort of a riff on that, but obviously all wheel drive with a turbocharged V6. And the thing about these, I, I can't remember the torque rating offhand, but the 4.3 liter V6 is already a torquey engine. 350 pound feet. So that's, I mean, what was the, uh, what was the 454 SS? Like 300, uh, like 380? Yeah, no, uh, bare, <laughs> just a little, little, little bit more. F from a, from a mass of 454 cubic inch V8 to a 4.3 V6. I mean, the torque is, is really what sold it here. The torque just got these little trucks up and moving. Um, if I remember correctly, I think the drive lines were a little fragile. I, yeah, I want to say I've heard something along those lines. I mean, it, it was, uh, I wasn't completely into these cars back in the day. Um, but I do remember hearing some people talking about, oh, I mean, yeah, they can launch great, but you might only do it two or three times before you run into troubles. Um, which, hey, all wheel drive at that point, I mean, it was still, I won't say it's in, in its infancy at this point, but. <laughs> People are still trying to get it figured out. Audi's doing it at this time, obviously. Um, Subaru Audi and Subaru are kind of the but, of but, all wheel drive are kind of the notable. Yeah, for, for I mean, for on road performance. I mean, yeah. we're not talking a four wheel drive system. We're talking a full time right. all wheel drive system, which right. operates differently. So, I, I mean, there was a little bit of that involved, but Wait, yeah, I man. Ah, oh, I, I. This is another one of those vehicles I'd love to have, but unlike the Shelby Dakota, th these aren't cheap. No, um, they're not. I mean, they're going up quickly. They're, I mean, they're not like, um, I don't think they're, they're like six figure territory yet. No, but, but, but I mean, they're, but they're going up at a surprising, at a surprising pace. Yeah. And, and I mean, rightfully so. The legend, the legend that these things made back in the day. Um, I mean, with, with the performance. I mean, it's, it's low production, high performance. It's, it's that kind of sweet spot that, you know, that's why people want them. Mm -hmm. There aren't many of them. And, the few that are out there, you know that they really are cool performance vehicles. So, yeah. And yeah. unlike the Dakotas, you actually see some of these in nice condition running around because oh, yeah. You know, yeah. people have found them. Um, I mean, I'm not saying that they didn't get beat on back in the day because uh, they did, but people are finding them, they're restoring them, they're putting them back in shape. Um, and of course, we can't talk about the Cyclone without talking about its little baby SUV twin. I mean, technically, <laughs> I mean, it's not a truck; it's an SUV. But come on, we, we can't do this without mentioning the Typhoon. Same thing. It's the, basically it's, the same vehicle. It's, just... it's, it's the same. It's the same vehicle. It's the four point three V six from ninety two to ninety three. It's just it was done on the Jimmy platform, so it had an enclosed back instead of the instead of the open pickup bed. Uh, I can't. I think the performance was about the same. Um, I'm pretty sure you're right. That, that... Despite the differences, but Cyclone Typhoon, man, those twins twins are, are something of legend so we are is the plan we're purposely going to skip the lightning just because we kind of did lightning talk we've we've done a lot of two, lightning talk. I mean, okay. I, obviously i'm a big lightning fan i'll just i'll just hey i'll, I'll put a shout out <laughs> I've, I've got my 125th scale first generation lightning that i still need to build um that kind of i mean that was a response honestly to the to the ss 454 yeah um and you know four did a good job on it but yeah, we've talked lightning blue. If you want to go back a couple rambling about cars episodes, you can Another hear me two go, or three. Yeah. go just on and on about it. Let's stick with Chevrolet. So this is one I, I got to be honest with you. I totally forgot about. I think I, I don't know. I completely forgot about this, but there was a Silverado SS that launched in early 03 and we're looking at it now. Uh, for, it had the six liter Vortec V8 making 345 horsepower, yep. 380 pound feet. Um, yeah, this is honestly, until you mentioned it, this is one that really kind of, kind of out of my purview. I missed this one. You know, it's kind of ironic because the SS 454 from 1990 kind of spurred the first generation Lightning. And then the second generation lightning kind of spurred the Silverado SS, you know, it's mm -hmm. give a little, take a little, um, the, the Silverado SS, it, it was, it wasn't as beefy as that second gen lightning was. Um, obviously as you've seen here from the picture, you could get it in the extended cab. 
Um, but I mean, it, it was still a decent performing truck. They didn't, once again, though, they, they kind of focused more on, well, let's keep it a truck, but just, you know, let's make it monochrome. Let's get rid of the chrome. Um, you know, let's give it some neat body work. Let's give it some wheels, a badge and a muscular engine. Um, it's, it's not quite the corner cover that the second gen lightning was. And I say corner cover kind of loosely because I mean, we're still talking about a truck, but Ford and Ford SVT did a lot of homework on the second gen lightning to not just make it fast, but to also actually make it handle pretty decently. Mm -hmm. Um, and their formula was always, well, we'll take the smallest configuration F-150 that you can get the single cab, uh, flare side, and we'll make that happen. Um, Chevrolet with the Silverado, they obviously offered it in the single cab as well as the extended cab, which I mean, you know, I remember back in the day seeing a lot of those extended cab uh, Silverado SSs running around. And of course, it must, I, I must have just been where I live. I don't ever remember seeing this vehicle. I don't know, I mean, man. I, I mean, I mean, they weren't everywhere. I uh, saw and that, and that's, and a that's, good that's, number of second gen lightnings. <laughs> Well, I, I mean, that's, ever that's why I remember seeing one of these. That's, that's why these didn't last too long, I guess. Um, but I mean, I, I hate to I hate to dish out hate because these were cool trucks and they were I mean, they were pretty quick. I can't remember offhand what their zero to 60 times were. Um, I can look that up really quick because I actually I'm kind of curious about it as well. Uh, Silverado. SS zero to 60. I want to say they were like like low sevens. Um, uh, okay. Yeah. I'm hitting it right on the head there. Like high sixes, low seven seconds. Okay. Um, well, car and driver got it up to 6.3. Um, I don't know if that's, if that's using the rollout or not, but I mean, yeah, mid six second in the early two thousands. I mean, that's stout for a pickup truck. That's stout sure. for just about anything. Never mind a pickup truck. So, I mean, yeah, it had the straight line performance. Chevrolet was, I mean, with the extended cab, they were exploring kind of new territory there because up to this point, when, when you look at the Little Red Express, when you look at the Shelby Dakota, when you look at the SS454 and the Lightning, those were all just single cab, small, you know, you know, pickups. So they were trying to explore the waters a little bit. Okay, can we offer something performance oriented that's going to appeal to somebody that wants a little more space. And I think the answer was no, I, they just, if I remember correctly, they just didn't sell that well, but that's probably why I've never seen. That. I don't remember. <laughs> <ever> seeing one. <laughs> I can't believe you've never seen. Well, Hey, you showed me, you showed me the, uh, the full size Ram Shelby concept. I introduced you to the Silverado SS We're we're on the same page here now. So people wow. watching on YouTube just got a teaser of what we're going to be talking about next. And this is what I am very familiar with. Yep. And that's the Ram SRT 10 um, that debuted. Uh, so it went on sale for 2004. Um, and so I had an uncle who worked at the Twinsburg stamping plant um, in Ohio. And he had he wanted one of these trucks so bad. Like he just desperately wanted he had, you know, a V8. Uh, Ram, but you know, not the SRT 10, but he mm -hmm. desperately wanted one of these trucks. So I, I definitely have a memory of memory of one of these. Um, and these things were wild. Basically for anyone not familiar with them, they took the V 10 out of the Viper and they shoved it into a pickup truck. And um, I mean, and that's really, that's really, I mean, they, they did work on the suspension. Yeah. I, I, I'm being I, I a mean, bit I, reductive, but that's the selling point. Yeah, I, I mean, I mean, you do, you have to make some changes when you drop a big V10 with that much power in there. Um, oh God. And it's with the, with the manual too. I remember, I remember Dodge making a big deal um, because you can never get the lightning with a manual. It was only automatic and Dodge was making a big deal. You could get theirs with a manual transmission. I think you could only get it with a manual, unless I'm maybe mistaken. There, there, there was. Oh no, uh, there no, there is an automatic. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. yeah there, there were automatics offered, and um, I believe it started out just has the you know the small formula, the single cab, the short bed, but they followed uh, Chevrolet's lead, if you will, and they eventually offered the Ram SRT10 in just a huge quad cab format, and even with that V10. Uh, I mean, it was still quick, but it wasn't, um, I, I mean, it, if I remember correctly, it wasn't lightning quick. I, I've the second gen lightnings, I think we're getting stocked to 60 miles an hour in about five seconds. And I think, I think the Ram SRT struggled to get there despite having considerably more power. Um, but they did hold the speed record for pickup trucks at one point. 
um, 150 some miles an hour. I don't know, Bruce, do you want to go 150 in a, in an older Dodge Ram? No, no, <laughs> I barely want to go 80 in an older Dodge Ram. <laughs> oh yeah. Here's the quad cab you're talking about. Like, yep. There's something undeniably like kind of, you know, there's something like childishly cool about that. Like <laughs> I don't want to own one, but the, just like a stupid big engine and a big dumb truck. Like it's, there, there's something to, to be said for that. I mean, I mean, there is, there is. And I mean, I even hesitate to call it. Well, okay. May, maybe it is kind of big, dumb truck territory. Um, I Dude, was never it's a big... an 8.3 liter V10 in a giant truck. Like, no, and not designed for like like pulling your horse trailers or anything. Just, no, 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 just no. just designed to to roast the back tires into oblivion. Right. Well, there's nothing. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. But and, also, and you there's can... a little bit something wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can. I haven't looked at prices on those lately, but for a while, you could get those like cheap. Like I mean, like like fifteen or twenty grand for a five hundred horsepower V10 muscle truck. Mm-hmm. And I guess it's because that's a Viper engine. Anything that goes wrong, you have to pay 10 grand to fix. Sure. Um, but yeah, I mean, that was probably, I would say that's the pinnacle of, of the street truck era, if you will, because Ford, obviously at this point, um, they dropped the lightning after 2004, there were plans for a, a lightning in 2005 with a new body style. And I actually saw some of the mock-ups for that. Oh really? Um, um, but it, SVT at that time they were running into some of the issues that uh, Dodge eventually ran into with their SRT10. Okay, the trucks keep getting bigger. We need progressively more power to maintain that kind of performance. At what point does this become ridiculous and just and just cost prohibitive? Right. Um, and then also Ford then mainstreamed SVT from its kind of separate group that it was into Ford proper and that put the ax on all kinds of SVT plans. So that's, I mean, that's where that ended there. And, and also, also we entered the realm of the off-road performance truck, the, your, the Raptor, off-road truck. your yep. TRX, like, you know, we've kind of been seeing that that's kind mm-hmm. of the new way that companies do that. That kind yep. of the street performance truck, it's pretty much dead. There isn't really one anymore. Not really. Well, it's probably worth mentioning the Harley Davidson F one fifties. Because okay. they yeah. sort of took the place of the SVT Lightning for a little while. They through, did through the two thousands. I mean, you could even get them supercharged there for a little while, and they were and they were pretty gutsy. And of course, we we've seen some companies trying to revive um, just on their own, like a Harley Davidson branded pickup truck. Yep. Um, there's, there's, I think the last one we saw was a couple of years ago, but yeah, it wasn't it ago. wasn't it almost like a six figure truck or something? It was. I mean, it's just getting kind of ridiculous, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So do we want to go ahead and transition into what's going to make this show a little bit different? <laughs> well, before we do that, I need okay. to mention one more street truck that existed after the Ram. And a lot of people overlook it. If it's the one I'm thinking of. It's overlooked for good reason in my mind. I, I don't know if it's a good reason. So he, here's the thing. Okay. This truck isn't known for it's power because it's right. got just a V six. Um, oh gosh. Where is my image of this? Okay. Let me just tell you, it's the Toyota Tacoma X runner that it's came out in the, so in the mid two thousands here. I've got it right here. If you don't, look, I've look, got it. Look at that. But look at that truck. I mean, okay. So it, it's the Tacoma it's lowered. It's got Bilstein shocks. It's got a six-speed manual. I mean, it's it's a straight-up street truck designed to go out, row gears, toss it through some corners. It's not gargantuan in size. It doesn't have a lot of power. What um, I had some notes written down here. What was it? I think 200, about 236 horsepower. Six more horsepower than the SS 454. Come on, guys. Six-speed yeah, manual. Yeah, a decade later. Over a decade later. <laughs> six-speed, six but here, I mean, come on. Six-speed manual, and it wasn't, you know, like a two-foot stick like you had in the uh, in the SRT-10. Sure. If if you wanted a street truck not to just go out and roast the tires, but actually have a little bit of fun with, like on some back roads, 
man, the X runner is overlooked and I love this truck ever since it came out. This will be another one that I'll put into my garage one of these days. So when I get that GoFundMe started, know that your funds are going to go towards Shelby Dakotas, a Dodge Daytona. Well, I'll toss the car in there. This Toyota Tacoma X runner, possibly a few other, you know, minor things like Ferraris and stuff. We don't need to talk about that. You don't need to own a Ferrari. I, I, uh, yeah, I know, but I kind of do. But we're not talking about Ferraris. We're talking about the Toyota Tacoma X Runner. I don't. That, these just never was, did anything for me. Like I mean, it's just I mean, not. They they went and and maybe that's why they didn't last too long. I think they I think they wrapped up like 2011 or 2012. 2012. 2012. Yeah, somewhere around there. So I mean, they didn't exist for a long time. But I thought it was a cool effort. I thought it was a very cool effort on Toyota. Nobody else was really doing that at the time. It was it was an interesting response to the big, the the big, dumb SRT 10. And could we see something like that again with trucks like the Santa Cruz and the Maverick that are coming out? You think? Yeah, I do. I mean, we kind of already know that there's going to be a tremor or some version of the Maverick. Um, You know, what are we we looking at here, Bruce? You're you're still sharing your screen. We're looking at some weird. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, concept. What is that? Mercury. 528 it's bell apparently a concept? 55 mercury concept but i apologize here I, I no no off. don't apologize we need to talk <laughs> about that car in a future episode i've never yeah. seen that before i'm fine with that um, okay so so let's 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 talk about what makes this episode a little different here okay so the f-150 lightning debut has debuted by the time you've heard this it's debuting um mr smith is going to be on the live stream that motor one is doing Uh, where they are going to be breaking apart everything about the Lightning. We are going to have a pre-show. We are going to be talking over the debut, and we are going to have a post-show once we have all of the debut info. Unfortunately, I will not be on that show for reasons. Um, But Smith will be. I will be, and and we we do have a pretty interesting group, and there's going to be some very interesting discussion. We have the pre-show, and then we're going to be there live with the Lightning debut. Um, and, and I mean, it's, it's already debut debuted as you're listening to this. So let me just run over some quick stats here before we jump to the next part. Um, it's going to be, and, and this is what kind of gets me more than anything. They're going to offer it starting under $40,000, 39 and change. And for that price, it's going to be standard, um, all wheel drive. They're, they're calling it four by four, but really it's, it's dual motors front and rear. Um, it's got the independent rear suspension at the back, um, Ford is estimating 563 horsepower, 775 pound feet of torque. It's easily the most powerful F-150 ever. They're targeting a zero to 60 time of the mid four second range. That should make it among the fastest. I I, I don't know what the Raptor R is going to do when it comes out. Um, But this truck is, this truck is going to be extremely fast. Um, It's got an estimated EPA range, uh, EPA estimated range of 230 miles in its standard mode. Long range mode is going to have a 300 mile range. It's going to have a charge time, um, charge 54 miles of range in 10 minutes. That's on 150 kilowatt charger. So, you know, reasonably fast charger. You can go from 15 to 80% of your range in 41 minutes on that charger. So, I mean, it's not the fastest, but I, I think it'll be a competitive vehicle. Um, and of course yeah. we're, we're talking about all kinds of things with our group, um, with the debut of the lightning and then our post show. And what we're going to do instead of Bruce and I talking about it and just kind of repeating everything here, we're actually going to drop in the post show and right. we're going to do that right now. And then Bruce and I are going to come back and we're going to talk a little bit about what we think here. Yeah. And just real quick, I just want to clarify, this is an experiment. We honestly don't know how this is going to work, but we're trying it because we think it could be cool. So li- honestly, we want your feedback about this. If you think it's cool to kind of get, to kind of have this different con- uh, content, you're going to be hearing from Clint Simone, who's been on the podcast before, Tom Belogny, who's been on the podcast before, um, Kristen Shaw, who is a re- kind of a regular person on the Inside EVs podcast. Mm-hmm. So these are really cool people. Um, but we haven't really tried this kind of live stream slash podcast idea before. Um, and we kind of want your opinion because we would like to do that in the future. We've kind of toyed with it, 
but we're not sure what you guys think. So right. podcast at motor1.com, you know the address. You also know how to get in touch with Smith and I, uh, whether it's through the post, whether it's through Twitter, whatever. Let us know because if you see this and you hate it, we won't do it again. If you see it and you love it, we have some ideas on how to approach things in the future. Yep. And so, one thing worth mentioning too, I mean, when we're talking about experiments, um, we really like the idea of doing a live version of rambling about cards where right. listeners are right here with us in comments where you can say, Smith, what the hell is that on the shelf behind you? And and you can congratulate Bruce on his absolutely superior vehicle knowledge. I'm still in awe on that Dodge Ram. I'm not going to ever forget that. So, so that's why we want to hear from you. Podcast at motor yeah. com. You get me on Twitter um, at CH writing Bruce. What's your Twitter? Uh, Chris Bruce, 1985, but we're not done. We're throwing it. We're, we're, no, we're, we we're not back. done. We're not done. We're going to go to the, uh, to the live stream post show. And here we go. Some of the big ticket items, just to paraphrase from that presentation, two battery options. We have a 230, or excuse me, uh, two different ranges on this truck. It'll come standard with 230 miles of range, up to 300 miles of range. 426 horsepower base. We have up to 563 horsepower on the bigger battery pack. And then the other big headline, $39,000-ish to start and the top of the line fully loaded model up to $90,000. There's a lot to go over here. Tom, hit me with your biggest thing that you got out of that presentation. What are you thinking? So, you know, the charging uh, is, is important to me, being so, you know, electric vehicle focused. Um, and I think they're doing well with that. You know, we got some more stats, 15 to 80% in 44 minutes. The extended range battery pack is going to have a 19 kilowatt onboard charger. The, car, the thing will recharge quickly. And as I was trying to say at the end when Ford so rudely interrupted me and started the presentation, uh, I'll have to talk to Bill about that, uh, you know, <laughs> the vehicle to load. Uh, this vehicle is going to have the ability to um, deliver 9.6 kilowatts. That's like having a 10 kilowatt genset. I mean, that can power your whole house, even a small air conditioner in the house. So, uh, you know, as far as not just the house, work job sites, that can power all the power tools that you could possibly, you could have your entire crew, you know, uh, uh, working off the vehicle. So that that was really one of the things I was looking for. Um, I, I, you know, I know, like I, I said earlier, some of the things it's not going to stack up to a diesel F-150 or a gas F-150 range and things like that. That, that it's not going to be able to compete with that. So for some people, it's not going to work, but it's Ford did what they needed to do and made the charging, both charging the vehicle and then vehicle to grid very functional. Yeah, I'm in Texas and that really caught my attention when he was talking about powering your house for three days, because I have friends who lost power for at least three days and that would have helped them out a ton. Yeah, It distracted me from the range numbers, which I thought were a little bit disappointing. I would have liked to have seen them start at 300 and go up, but I guess you have to start somewhere. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, I almost feel like they're setting this up for like a longer range version that's going to come further down the road mm -hmm. um, when you're talking about, I mean, 300 seems like that should be where they're starting um, with a vehicle this size and then go up with 400. I think, uh, uh, Tom, you probably know better right offhand. Uh, I mean, Tesla's quoting what 500 in Cybertruck. So I, f I, f I feel like Ford needed to do a little bit better here on the range. Well, what Tesla quotes and what they deliver, sometimes <laughs> what they deliver are two different things. Right. Um, you know, and I'm a Tesla owner. I, I drive a Tesla and I have a Cybertruck reservation. So, um, you know, I, I, I beat them up a lot, but uh, they, they, they also do some things well. Uh, you know, I, I'm not surprised by the range, personally. Um, you know, I, 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 I didn't think, and I was kind of setting that up in the beginning, I didn't think that this was going to be the truck for everybody. And, it, and, it's, and it's not going to be. But you have to remember, and for those that don't live with electric vehicles, that don't work with them every day like I do, there's a different paradigm with the range where every day that work truck or that truck you're driving leaves your, 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 your yard or your, you know, your business or your home fully charged. So you've got this yeah. 300 mile range every day. And, you know, uh, you know, for people that are wondering, will this work for my business? You know, can this work? You know what? Get a little pad paper. And every day that work truck goes out in the morning, reset your trip. And then at the end of the day, record how many miles it drove. 
Do that for a couple of months and see how often do you need more than 250 miles of range. Now, there's a lot of people, especially in middle America, that's going to need more than that. And it won't work for everybody. But like I said, 15% of their sales, 150,000 of these sold a year. I think Ford would sign on for that in a heartbeat. Let's do a quick recap of some of the uh, performance stats here. Uh, 426 horsepower, 563 horsepower in the extended range, up to 775 pound feet of torque. Jim Farley said it, this thing should absolutely haul ass, especially for something that's this size, right? We found out today that, or yesterday, I guess, that the Hummer EV is going to weigh over 9,000 pounds. They, they were coy on the weight. They didn't tell us how much this is going to weigh uh, with payload or without payload, but it's got to be what, 6,000 pounds plus, or is that overdoing it? No, I, I mean, didn't we hear somewhere that the batteries alone are like, like the the weight of a small car yeah i, yeah, I, I, I want to say i want to say that cropped up somewhere so i mean i i think it'll be i think it'll be over i think it'll be over six thousand i think it'll be i i think it'd be closer to seven um i don't think it's gonna be hummer ev territory but i mean it look it's an electric vehicle we know the batteries weigh something i don't think in this instance that people are as interested in the vehicle weight, as long as it has the cargo capacity, as long as it has the towing capacity. And on this truck, I mean, like Tom has been saying, this isn't a solution for everybody. This is, this is the first step into this world and the performance that Ford is advertising. Um, I mean, when they started talking about low center of gravity, perfect weight balance, best handling, fastest F-150, I mean, that was like, I mean, that was appealing to all the first and second gen lightning lovers out there. I mean, that's, that was a straight up homage to them. Hey, this is a truck that seats five people. Yes, you can take it off road if you want, but we still know there's a lightning badge on there. It still has to mean something. And, and he does, did I say think. it's faster. He said it's faster. Oh, yeah. It's quicker than the Raptor and the original lightning. And that's going to attract yeah. some buyers. Yeah. yeah, well, mid four second range. Um, the the first gen lightning, um, I mean that was two hundred and forty horse. That was zero to sixty in about on a good day, maybe seven and a half seconds. The second gen, um, when they upped the power to three eighty, um, those were low to mid five seconds, zero to sixty, provided you could get them to hook up, and a lot of people couldn't get them to hook up. Um, so I mean, yeah, I mean this is, I mean, sorry, all you OG lightning lovers, the the new electric lightning is going to smoke them all. Um, it's going to smoke them all in sales too. I bet you. I, I, oh, I think it was full year of production. It's going to outsell the entire nine-year run of the Lightning uh, pickup trucks of past. Well, in, in, in defense too to SVT, I mean they they were always on, on the mindset of okay, this is a niche vehicle. We're purposefully not going to sell a lot of them because we wanted to be kind of unique. But I also to that effect, a lot of people just weren't interested in a street truck. They still wanted their truck to do things, which is why when Ford came out with the Raptor, okay, here's a high-performance truck that can go off-road and on. That thing sold like gangbusters. So I think Ford is actually taking a really smart approach here. You can make this a street truck if you want. I bet there are already aftermarket companies just rubbing their hands together <laughs> with, with lowering kits and things to, to drop it down a little bit, especially with that kind of electric power on hand. But... It also has the ground clearance. And if you want to take it off road, I mean, you, I don't think you're going to take it to Rubicon, right? But if you want to go off road, I mean, you can a little bit. It has that capability. I think Ford's playing it down the middle. And I, I think I think they're onto something here. If you have a question for us, go ahead and drop it in the comments section. We'd love to take some questions from anybody who's watching right now. And otherwise, head over to motor1.com or insideevs.com at the very top of the website. We'll have all the coverage on this truck that you need to know, including an exclusive first look video where we get in person with the truck and get to play around with it a little bit. Um, yeah, I'm tr There were so many things that jumped out at me at small features, and we should jump and kind of talk about the tech in this truck too, not just the truck things, but the interior and then some of the, the specifics of it being an EV. What comes to mind with each of you is the coolest sort of tech feature, not necessarily a truck feature. Kristen, I'll start with you. Well, the screen, I mean, you can't miss it, right? <laughs> it's right. Giant. Let, me, uh, let me find a picture of that, and uh, I'll get it up on the screen in just a second here. Yeah, it's it's got that high-tech feel, 
I mean, plus it just has lots of power options. I think they said 11, did they say something about 11 power outlets? I mean, plus it being able to charge your, your house up. It's got the electronic key, the smart key, smart towing. Right. So they're, they're thinking of everything they've got and throwing it into this truck. Like, let's do it all. You're on screen right now with the uh, 15 and a half inch display. It's right out of the Mach-E. I got to say the user interface looks a little different. We've been lucky enough to play around with the Mach-E a couple of times, and this looks like a different software uh, that's in it. And we also have a, a digital instrument cluster that I believe they said is standard across all of the trim levels. Uh, we have a question on screen right now talking about the max towing. I believe it's up to 10,000 pounds 10, on the 000. extended range 10, battery. Is that correct? Yep. Yeah. 10,000, which I mean, hey, it, that's a healthy number. That's a big it number. Is. You can really, you could tow. I mean, it looks like a great vacation vehicle, right? You can have a giant frunk and you can tow. I mean, the, the question that I know people are asking, okay, it can tow 10,000 pounds, but how far can it tow the 10,000 pounds? How, how big of an effect is that going to have on the range? I mean, that's that's something that we don't know yet. I mean, Ford hasn't uh, said anything about it. And as Tom has been saying, I mean, maybe, yes, it can tow 10,000 pounds, but I, I really don't see this as being a vehicle that people are going to want to take on long vacations, at least right now, to tow their RV or their boat. Because, I mean, let's, let's be honest, that range will be affected. Mm -hmm. But did you notice one of the things that they brought up, which caught my ear, I was really interested in, I'd like to, God, I'd love to play with this, is they're going to yeah. have a smart range estimator. And it's going to be able to calculate your range while towing. I don't know how they're going to do that because unless you're going to, you know, weigh them or tell them exactly how much you're pulling, maybe after driving 30 or 40 miles, it can, it, it'll calculate the uh, consumption rating that it's having and then give you a uh, updated range estimator. But I mean, that's something that I'd geek out over if, if, if you know, if, if Ford's listening, let me get a hold of one of these and I'll do a whole video and article on it because I'm really interested <laughs> in seeing how that works. We do a lot of in, uh, articles on Inside EVs just yeah. on electric vehicles, towing ve towing trailers and whatever. People are fascinated with it because it does really affect the range. Uh, so, you know, um, I, I really want to get someone's ear at Ford and figure out, okay, what are you doing with this and how does it work? There's a lot of good questions coming through as well. Uh, let's hit that question in a second, but I also wanted to make the point uh, it has scales in the bed of the truck to account for the payload to make the range accurate. I think that's really interesting and a good piece of technology so that when you load up the truck, like most people will, it doesn't completely deplete the range out of nowhere and you end up saying, what the hell, how come I'm 60 miles short right. of where I need to be? Right. And does but the range no. estimator can also take into consideration, consideration topography? Like you see that it's pulling that airstream up a mountain, pulling that airstream up a, you know, 10% grade or 5% grade is a lot different than pulling it on flat ground. So, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's going to have to take into consideration consideration topography too, in addition to the, the, uh, the, uh, weight. Uh, let's get that comment on the screen right now. The one that's unfortunately blocking Kristen's face. <laughs> that's, that is that's okay. not intentional. That's terrible. <laughs> Gerald, you should be ashamed. No problem. Uh, we'll get that comment pulled down. But the $39,000 truck, there's not going to be a commercial grade one that's cheaper. Is that right? That That is the lowest cost of entry. And I can head over to the Ford website too. The the pre-orders just went live right now. I think they're going to make you order the expensive trims before they'll offer the true base price, price truck. Yeah. At the end of that presentation, I mean, I mean, that's why I, I was a little confused there too, because uh, um, Farley was talking about if you are a commercial customer, we're going to have a special version just for you. I, I wasn't clear if that was the $39,000 mm -hmm. price of the quote, yeah. or if there's going to be one, underneath that yet. So, I mean, yeah, that that's something that we're going to look into. Well, let's do this together. Let's, uh, let's order a truck together right now through Ford and see I, what we're dealing with. I want the high, I want the high power. What do we want to do? So they have lightning at the top. <laughs> we can click on that. Um, while we're just going through that, are there any other, you know, they made a big deal of this and kind of rightfully so. Um, we yeah. knew long before today that this truck was going to be a game changer. And to me, at least, 
it really felt like they made it feel that way. Uh, going forward with the timeline, how important is it that this truck gets to market quickly? I believe we're still about a year out from it hitting production. I don't want to be mistaken on that. I think uh, it's coming out. Uh, it's supposed to come out uh, the first uh, the first versions next spring. So yeah, I mean, yeah, we're still about a year out. Um, I mean, we, we were supposed to see a production version of Cybertruck by now, and we still haven't seen that. I think if Ford can end up beating Tesla to market, I think I think that would be a big win for them. I mean, they're they're not going to catch Rivian, I don't think, right, Tom? No, Rivian's. Uh, I have a friend of mine's got his delivery notice, and next month he's supposed to get it. So they're 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 not beating Rivian. <laughs> No, I think that's true as well. Um, we did have a comment that I want to address right now. It's asking us to compare this truck to the Cybertruck. And what do we think? Because we know that Tesla people are Tesla people, and rightfully so. If the company can deliver on any of the specs they promise, that's going to be one hell of a truck, like it or not. What do we think about this as a direct comparison point? Well, is this really a launch if they didn't try to break the windows? <laughs> <laughs> Try. Oh, that's, a, that's a fail on Ford's part. They should have tried that. <laughs> I, I mean, that would have been broken. funny if they played around with that. If they did something, but you know, you oh, know, that could have been an easy win that. too. But that would like, have been really funny. Just like throw a beanbag ball at the window, something like that. You yeah, know? but Ford's more conservative than that. Right? Yeah, they wouldn't. They wouldn't be likely to play with that. But I, I really think that this is a much more attractive truck than the Cybertruck, and I know I'm not alone thinking that. Uh, let's go through just a couple more comments before we start taking down the, the rest of this post. I, I'm excited about this. I, I think that this truck, we've been thinking about it for so long now, and they've been doing all these like little marketing stunts along the way, but th it feels like a big deal. Uh, any other final thoughts from each of you uh, before I start plugging how we're going to talk about this truck the rest of the week, including some more in-depth coverage on the podcast, which is coming up later in the week. Final thoughts, yes. everybody? So I have a final question. I want to know how many they can make each year because they're going to be constrained by batteries. Uh, everybody is. Uh, they couldn't, if everyone decided to buy this instead of the gasoline version, we know they couldn't make a million of them. So um, I wonder what their capacity is to put these out and will they be, um, you know, supply constrained, uh, you know, for the first yeah. year or so, will more people order them than they can deliver that? That's what I'd like to know. I think the, I think if I had to choose between the all electric and the power boost hybrid, I would pick the hybrid because the range is spectacular mm. and I'm really impressed by that, but this is quicker than the Raptor. Like I can't wait to try it. That's yeah, true. Kind of what I said already. Um, I think Ford is really smart playing this the way they're playing it. They're pulling on lightning heartstrings by saying, hey, this is a fast truck. This is also a good handling truck. That's something that was also always part of lightning's history. It wasn't just power. They also tried to make them handle a little bit better. But they're still also trying to make this truck appeal to a broader, more mainstream audience. And I think they're going to pick some of that audience. And I also think, because my marketing brain picked this up, after like the first 15 minutes of being fed um, and, <laughs> and rightfully so the, I mean, the pride of this truck being built at Rouge at the Rouge plant, That's true. The, sh the shout out to, to the, all the UAW um, you know, all the people in the UAW, uh, the unions, the manufacturing, the, the immense pride that's going into this. That was, that was not just simple lip service. That was Ford reminding everybody this is the F-150. This is our all-American truck. It's electric, but it's still all-American. And also a quick shout out. We're going to talk more about this on Rambling About Cars, the drops Friday morning, our podcast at MotorOne.com. We're actually going to have our post show plugged in there, and we're going to talk a little bit more about the lightning and all the trucks that led up to light. And we're back. And I we're hope you back. enjoyed it. We're back. That was that was a very interesting show, I got to say. I I didn't really know what to expect going in, yeah. um, but I had a lot of talk with them. Bruce, I want to talk a little bit about electric lightning with you. I, we've, I mean, we've talked a lot of Fords over the last month yeah, and I promise, so I promise going forward, we yeah, have so we're many doing cool a no Ford month starting. <laughs> it is what no Ford goes up. It's what going to be the 22nd, 23rd. I no am Ford. not talking about Fords again for a month. 
because we, we have we done need to too talk, much Ford content on this show. We need to talk S two thousands. We need to talk. Yeah, yeah, we board. need to yeah. talk four hundred Zs. We need to talk press yeah. photos from the nineteen sixties because That's what, what the hell? Should be. Yeah, I, uh, but, but anyway, but but let's. I mean, let's let's you and I go over lightning a little bit because I mean, you know a little bit about lightning here now. Sure. It's not a street truck. But it's not an off-road truck. It, it's well, it's not an off-road. See, this is this is why I think it's a it's a, actually a really smart move by Ford. It's not a street truck, and I know purists are going to be like they're going to be upset. Oh, uh, it, it should be it should be lower. They they should be doing more with the suspension. This isn't a Lightning. Well, it's it's more of a Lightning than the Maki is a Mustang. I'm sorry to say. Yeah, this 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 truck yeah. is fast, like the Lightning was. It's for one thing, a pickup truck like the mm-hmm. Lightning was. It's got a real bed. It's like five and a half feet, something like yeah, that. Yeah, it's 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 got a real bed. Um, it's I mean, it, there's no other way to say it. It's, I mean, it's seriously quick for what it is. It's seriously mm-hmm. quick for a truck. Yeah. But Ford also has to recognize they need to kind of sell. I, th- I think they understand they need to sell a fair amount of people on the idea of an electric F one fifty, and if you package that in just a street truck, there are a lot of F-150 drivers that aren't interested really in a street truck. So this is ready to you venture off the, off the beaten path a little aren't bit. aren't taking their F-150s off-road that often. I think that's fine. I My mean, issue is the range. The, the 230 yeah. miles for the standard version, you know, estimated, we don't know exactly, exactly yet, but it feels low-ish, especially when you consider if someone's towing or something like that, that number's going to drop quickly. Mm-hmm. I, I wish, because, you know, as we had been reporting on this, the rumor was 300 would be the start, and then the expanded battery might get you closer to 400. I I feel like 300 should just be the starting point. That's the yeah. kind of what sticks in my craw. I, I I do think the range could be a little bit better, and I suspect going forward it will be better. Oh yeah, um, yeah. I I think I think I won't say the Ford's kind of dipping their toe into the water because I mean they're going. I mean it's out there. This truck is here. It's electric. Mm-hmm. It's an F one fifty. It's full size. They're saying it'll do everything that your regular F one fifty would do. Here's I mean I guess I'm not thinking in terms of towing. And, and that application, because I know a lot of people will tow with their trucks, but that's a rare occasion. I'm thinking of the people that use a truck for work or business where you might not be going, but 50 or hundred miles a day, where you're not even going to be remotely worried about that range. I mean, think sure. about contractors that are using this in a, uh, in, in a professional setting, you're not going to be paying for fuel anymore. You're not going to be paying for right. oil changes. You're not going to be going in for lube service. You're not going to go in for coolant flushes, your the cost of ownership over time is just going to come back in such a major way. And if they're offering a decent truck for under forty grand, people are going out right now and, and spending fifty grand on an F one fifty and not thinking twice about it. Sure. Yeah. So if you could come back at forty grand and wipe out all of that other cost of ownership stuff over the course of a couple of years, I mean, I especially for fleets, I see this being just a huge step for, for fleet vehicles that, that aren't running more than maybe a hundred miles a day where mm-hmm. every day they could, they come back, they plug in, even if it's just a regular old plug where they charge overnight, the next morning you get up, your truck is essentially filled up with gas. So, Hey, I, I think it's a smart move. I think Ford is doing a really good job of balancing the old lightning name and what it meant and saying, Hey, you still have that performance that lightning had, but now you have a little bit more truck use. So we'll see, we'll see what happens from here. Right. Yeah. I, I guess, I guess I'm a touch more pessimistic than you, not pessimistic. I think it's a good vehicle. I think people are going to accept it. I, I guess I wish it was just a little bit more, but I think Going through my head about it, I don't think the vehicle that we're seeing arrive now is going to be the same vehicle that's going to be on sale five or ten years from now. Oh, I can see, you know, they're going to introduce it in this spec, and within five or ten years, it is going to be a far better vehicle than it is today, just because of technology. And they're going to figure out, you know, economies of scale. They're going to figure out how to produce it better. 
I'm not necessarily in love with it right this moment, but I think going down the line, the fact that Ford is doing this now is super smart because we know there's a Silverado EV coming, but it's going to be on the market after the Ford. So Ford gets first movement advantage there. Mm -hmm. And we haven't really heard anything. Have we heard anything about a Stellantis full EV pickup? Am I nope. crazy? I haven't. Nope. No, nope. so, there's there's nothing happening there. I mean, we've got Rivian that's that should be coming out, right? Um, supposedly, next I, I'm just month. thinking about Rivian the classic big three. Um, and and here's another thing: Tesla kind of put everybody on notice with a Cybertruck. We still haven't seen the production version of Cybertruck. No, Tesla is still kicking that down the road. So yeah, I think Ford making this move right now. Yeah, it's so a, I, it's a good move. I am cautiously optimistic is the best way to put it. I don't necessarily love it right now today. But I think if you ask me in five years, I could be on board. Yeah, I'm. Hey, I'm excited. I'm all for. I I love my V8s. I love my sound. Um, but I'm all for an electric future. So yeah. I think well, we're. I think we're stepping in the right direction. What do you think, folks? Podcast yeah. at MotorOne.com. The new Thank lightning you for is out. Joining us, yeah. Or I, should we? Or should we just throw it all away and just just embrace our street trucks of yore? And honestly, seriously, seriously, if you listen to this much of the podcast. Tell us what you thought of kind of putting the live stream in yeah. because we aren't sure whether this is, <laughs> this is truly an experiment and we want to know what you think. So please give us feedback. Um, give us feedback. Let us yeah. know. And um, you know what, Bruce, I think it's time for you to take us out of here. Yeah. So as always, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. Whenever you happen to listen to us, we appreciate it. We always appreciate every single person that listens to us, that leaves any sort of review, that gives us any sort of feedback. It's all appreciated. So yeah. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.